All right. Hello. 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 My name is Peter. Uh, I'm now calling. I'm, I'm now calling myself Doctor Peter Draws. I've always wanted to be. Um, uh, I just think that'd be cool. I'm just power hungry, I guess. Look, if I call myself Doctor enough, will it eventually just start sticking? Can I award myself an honorary doctorate? What is the easiest way to get a doctorate? There doesn't even need to be a, a medical doctorate. Um, look, I don't know. I just want to be able to put that at the beginning of my name. I have been ordained online. You know, you can just go to universallifechurch.com or whatever, fill out a form, and you become um, a, a reverend. And I have done that. So I can, I can marry you to someone else. I can, marry, I can um, wed two people, join them together in holy matrimony. I can do that for you for a price. Uh, but, I mean, I mean, and also, I'm now a doctor. And I've declared myself a doctor by the powers vested in me by the state of North Carolina and whatever resides in the heavens above and all of the firmament around us and below us and in between. I am a doctor and I hereby declare it. And I... I don't think anyone should tell me I'm not. Okay. Anyways. Anyways. Uh, okay. Here's the intro to the um, podcast. Um, all right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Doctor Peter's Content Free Podcast episode epi- episode sixteen. I think. Right. Uh, the podcast where everything's made up and the points don't matter. Um. I don't look. I've. Once again, I've done this thing where I've taken way too long since the last podcast. There's several times when I've sat down to make this, to record this, to just talk into the mic and watch the little sound waves appear on the screen, and I just haven't done it. And the bad thing is, this means two things have slipped out of my mind. First of all, I've forgotten what I talked about in the last podcast, so I'm afraid of repeating myself. Not really the worst thing in the world, but worse than that, I have forgotten all the things that have happened to me since the last podcast, whenever that was. Let me see what time. Um, I uploaded the last podcast May 21st. May. That was so long ago. May. June. That's like all of June and most of July and a few days of May. April. 30 days have September. 30 days have September, April, June, and November. Six days of May. Oh my goodness. It's a lot of... So a lot of days. So one big thing that happened was I tried mowing my lawn. I have maybe if a if an acre is a football field up to like the ten yard line, starting at the goal line, I maybe have like three uh, three fifths of an acre, something like that. I don't know. It's pretty close. Probably not a whole acre. A good chunk of an acre, but it's a lot. And the first time I moved in here, uh, I didn't own a lawnmower, right? And someone just casually said to me, I think maybe one of the um, the real estate agents was like, yeah, I just get one of those riding lawnmowers, right? Lawnmower, lawnmowers, riding lawnmowers and just mow it. Just like casually told me to spend, like how much does a riding lawnmower cost? Hundreds of dollars, right? Don't just casually tell me to drop hundreds of bucks on something. It's ridiculous. And then my landlord um, gave me a, her yard guy's number. I think I literally put him in my phone as yard guy. Then when I finally met him, he introduced me to himself. And I, of course immediately forgot his name because that's just how my brain works. So I still have him in my phone as yard guy. <sighs> Should I ask him his name again when I meet him ever in the future? Like, hey, what was, hey, forgot, uh, didn't catch your name last time? Or, I think I should, yeah, that's a good way to do it. Hey, how's it going? Hey, didn't catch your name last time. As you're shaking his hand, you know? That's, no, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. Don't be bashful, Peter. <sighs> mm. 
I've got coffee here, by the way, in my Daft Punk mug. Also, I ordered, they were out, Is this, this isn't bad, right? If they're out of stock, if the Daft Punk patches on the Daft Punk website are out of stock, that's not my fault, right? I don't have to sit around waiting, uh, sitting on my hands till they come back in stock. It's not, how bad is that to go online and purchase a Daft Punk patch from a third party? feels a little bit bad because I want to support Daft Punk with these and I feel like these are not supporting Daft Punk and that's the whole reason I want to buy it but I have a Daft Punk patch here and I think I'm going to put it on my backpack that I usually use. It's a Vans canvas backpack and maybe I can get some black thread and learn how to sew patches on because I just don't feel comfortable with ironing on patches. It seems like they always peel off and it could fall off at a bad time and fall down into a bottomless gorge when I'm walking on a a rope bridge across it or something and I don't want to lose this patch that way because it's a pretty nice patch of a pretty nice band. So anyways, I have that patch here. I have my mug here with coffee in it. What was I talking about? Mm. I mowed my lawn. So I ordered a lawnmower on Amazon. I ordered a push lawnmower on Amazon, right? Crazy technology we have these days that we can just get a push lawnmower delivered to us in the mail. I think I had been to to Lowe's that same day and I could have gotten one then, but I didn't even want to worry about whether it would like fit in my car or in the trunk or I could have taken the van, but that one doesn't have a license plate yet. And it's just like, ah, oh, this thing is just, I just went on Amazon and I bought the cheapest push lawnmower I could find, which still had pretty good ratings. I think it had like four or five stars or close to five or four and a half, three and a half. It was only like $120 for a push lawnmower. I thought worst case scenario, I don't know what I thought the worst case scenario was, but I bought it and I had it sitting in the box in the, in the, in the, in my shed here. I don't know what I call it. Shed workshop. And my lot, my, the grass was getting long. So I just called the yard guy and it turns out that he, he mows this whole yard for 40 bucks, which is a really good deal. I think, um, cause, uh, and it, and it takes him about 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 20 seconds, really. It seems like him and his son come over. They have a couple of those huge zero-point turn lawnmowers you set up on them. They have little levers, you know. And the, the, the lawnmower decks are about 20 feet wide. They just zip up and down the yard, zip around things, touch up with a couple of weed eaters. They're done with this lawn in no time. They make 40 bucks, and I hand it to them, you know, a couple of 20s. I say, hey, thanks. And, uh, and it's done. But then I felt bad because I had already bought this lawnmower. And then I just paid someone else to mow the lawn. And so my conscience was twanging away at me in the back of my head. So the next time the lawn was getting long, I thought, I've got to do this myself. At least once. So I popped out of the box. It was already assembled, fully assembled. I just had to straighten out the handle. I had to pour some oil in there, which was quite an ordeal. It came with a little bottle of oil, but I couldn't tell how much was supposed to go in there. There was like a little dipstick. It wasn't showing up. And it turned out I just had to pour the whole bottle in there, which was amazing. Because I thought, this isn't that big of an engine. How is this whole bottle of oil fitting in the engine? But it did. And then I had to go buy a gas can and go put some gas in it. And it was just like a whole day thing. But what really turned out being a whole day thing was that it took me like three hours to mow the lawn with that little push mower. It, it, it just took forever. What took the, what probably more realistically 10 or 15 minutes, maybe 20, maybe I think really though, 10 or 15, that guy with his son with the huge lawn mowers took me three hours. So now, but that's what I had to do. That's what I had to do to justify paying that guy 40 bucks. Just, I mean, it was good. I felt some some amount of uh, nostalgia, you know, because I think I talked about in the last podcast maybe how I used to always mow the lawn. But it was good to mow the lawn. It felt good. I had my shirt off, everything just hanging out, you know. But it's just not worth it. I, the whole time I was like, I, I could be inside working on stuff right now. It was good at first, but then towards the end I was just kind of fuming away. But still, the angrier you get, kind of the faster and more efficiently you mow. Maybe less efficiently, but still faster. And also I don't have a weed eater. So I got some little garden shears I'm going to use to kind of snip away at some things. I think that will actually be satisfying. Just kind of snip, snip, snipping. And 
I was mowing and the little baby chickens were wandering around just kind of out always you know, around about, I think maybe cutting the grass shorter makes it easier for the chickens to find like little crickets and bugs and slugs and stuff for them to nibble on because the, the grass isn't as long, but I'm not sure. They were having a good time of it. The sun was high and hot, but gradually got lower towards the end. Three hours in, the shadows were long, and I was in some, I was in some of the shadows and getting kind of cold with the sweat evaporating off of me. Also, I have to tell you something about the chickens. I don't know if I mentioned this yet officially on YouTube. Look. I don't, how many chickens did I tell you that I had? I have right now in my possession, I don't know if I really possess them, but they live with me. They have a, I have a chicken coop and I just keep the door open and they go in there at dusk and come out at around dawn or so. Uh, they free range around in the yard. They seem to have a pretty cush and c comfortable life, right? And there's seven of them now. Uh, but the thing is, I used to have eight of them. Seven including, four, I have four little baby chicks, which are growing up mighty fast. And only one of them has like the little, those weird little red flaps of skin on the top and bottom of their beaks though. What does that mean? Does that mean that one's going to be a rooster? But some of the, some of the hens have that. What is that? What does that part of the chicken anatomy mean? I don't know. Someone explain that. What, is that. what does all that mean? Some hens do, some hens don't. Some, all roosters do, like in a great amount. Um, anyways, I used to have eight chickens, now I have f seven. Because just one morning, um, I think while I was gone, I was gone on a trip and my landlord was dropping by, looking after them, and <sighs> came back, and it's, uh, well, suffice it to say, I think one of my chickens, the mom of the four baby chickens, which are now, I think, it's safe to say, at least adolescents, maybe teenagers. I think they're teenagers. They're still mostly peeping. They haven't really learned to cluck yet. They still mostly just go beep, 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 instead of going cluck, 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 right? Um, that mama chicken, I think, um, pessimists, or me, if I'm in a pessimistic mood, would say it got eaten by a possum or a fox or uh, a raccoon or something, but if I'm in a good mood and trying to stay positive about things, um, I would say that it just went away on a trip. It needed a vacation, some time off, some time away, maybe just some soul-searching, self-finding mission. You know, packed a bag, put it on the end of a stick, and is just hopped on a train somewhere and just is just off out and about on a long trip and might be back any day now. And... While I am I am excited for the return of that chicken, I am also happy for that chicken to be out there, out in the big wild world, out yonder. That, that, that chicken's out there living its best life, okay? And I think this is better for the chicken, better than being literally cooped up here. I mean, it could, the whole time, this is, I think, the best way to have pets, right? You give it somewhere to live, somewhere to stay if it wants to, but it's not tied up, it's not fenced up, and it can leave at any time if it wants to. It's staying here of its own free will. Also, I kind of want to get an outdoor cat. I think there's enough woods around here that I wouldn't need to get someone to take care of it if I went on trips, like, as long as there's, like, water. I mean, cats are good at taking care of themselves. They can catch rats and mice and things. I don't know. That's the only reason I don't want to get pets is because every time I go on trips, you got to get someone to take care of it. You know, things hold you down. Not that I go on a lot of trips, but it seems like I have been going on a lot of trips lately. And I thought if I was going on these trips, I would have to get someone to be taking care of this cat, even though I do have a neighbor. I do have neighbors, but I haven't been talking to them because we're not living in that day and age where we talk to our neighbors, do we? It used to be, I feel like, when maybe it was before the invention of air conditioning when we all had to sit out on our porches and try to catch the slightest hint of a breeze that we had no choice but to be face-to-face -face with our neighbors all the time, but now we're cooped up inside all the time and we can see our neighbors 
at, at most once a week if we play our cards right. That's about what it is for me. Anyways, so what I'm missing one chicken. I'm missing her. I, I just mean I don't know where she is. It's probably a little bit I I would say it might even though it's realistic, it's also pessimistic to assume she's dead. And I am happy to assume she's just out there living it up. Okay. Okay. Also I went on a big trip recently. Um, which I haven't really talked about. I meant I meant to make a podcast right when I got back from this trip, and then I kept on not doing it. So that's what I'm mainly frustrated about because I feel like I've started to forget all the fun little details, right? Um, I went to what we did is I have some friends and some people that became friends on the trip. Um, someone named Holden, someone named Rachel, someone named Ryan. I didn't know Ryan as well. I had met him a couple times before, but um, we became close friends on this trip. I knew Rachel and Holden already. And so we left, um, was it Raleigh? No, yeah, Raleigh. Flew to Denver, the airport there, where they had, um, if, you, if you saw the, the c captions I posted on Instagram with some little travel pictures and stuff, you might have gotten hints at some of this story. Uh, I did like the the airport there in Denver is is really nice. There were there were birds flying around in the terminal, which we weren't we weren't sure if it was intentional or not. But how do you catch birds? I don't know. There's definitely ways. I'm sure they could call in somebody, some sort of specialist, right? And but they're just like flitting about everywhere. It's definitely interesting. But like I didn't see anyone getting pooped on, so that was good. Maybe they have some special breed of birds that they can train them to, you know, like they, they can housebreak them. They domesticate them. I don't know. Also, they had free putt-putt there. I'm not sure why. Some sort of promotional thing for a putt-putt company, but I felt like these are all people on layovers who don't go into Denver or something. Or, and it's so far away from Denver, people in Denver don't come way out to this airport just for the free putt-putt and then go back into Denver to, uh, you know, play putt-putt at whatever company that, that is. And... If you do live in Denver and you land in that airport, you're not going to stay in the airport longer just to play free putt putt. You're just going to want to go home or something. I don't know what it. I don't know why they were doing that, but we played a, a round of free putt putt. Um, I didn't get any holes in one. I, in fact, I did awful. I think Rachel got a hole in one once, and then like some lady came up to her and was like, "How did you do that?" Like she was some sort of professional, but it was totally accidental. I don't know. So then we flew to Calgary in Canada. Alberta, Canada. Calgary, which is a nice, kind of very picturesque, shiny city. It feels like, feel like the kind of city that you'd make in that video game, City Skylines. It feels very planned out and almost fake how perfect and crisp and... Um, I don't know, it seems kind of just weird how clean and shiny it all is. I don't know. It's it's a nice city, though. We liked it there. And then we went to the rental car place, um, and we were like, hey, we're here to pick up a car. So to be like a mid-sized SUV, paying like $400 for 12 days, right? Which is... That's pretty good. Right? Over 12 days, $400, I guess. And especially since we're like living out of the car, that's like our main expense. Uh, and but then they're like, okay, um, we're going to go ahead and give you a free upgrade, if that's okay. I don't know why they ask if that's okay. So they gave us the keys, and we walked up there. And the upgrade they gave us was a, uh, a Chevy Yukon, which is a massive car. It's just huge. It's like a, it's like a, sh a shipping car. It's like a container ship. It's like a, it's a like a hotel on wheels. It's huge. Uh, it's at least twice as big as the car we were gonna get before. Maybe three times. Just absolutely spacious, luxurious. It, it was amazing. And um, the most difficult part of it was that they gave us the where we had to pick up the car was on the seventh floor of this parking deck with this tiny, tight little corkscrew of a ramp going all the way down, and the 
This, this car is so fancy. It has like all these sensors and alarms when you're close to hitting something. And your, your seat vibrates when you're close to hitting something if you're in the driver's seat. So it was like the whole way down, all seven floors of this exit ramp. It was going telling me I was about to hit the wall in front of me that I was driving down. So the, the car seemed almost too big at that point, but it ended up being awesome. And it would have been extremely expensive to intentionally rent that car for, for 12 days. Like we looked it up later, like if you cho choose that size of car, it would have been like $2,000 or something instead of $400. But it's, it's, it made our trip amazing because we had so much more space. We, we kind of glamped it up a little bit at some points, you know, like there were like DVD screens in there. We like bought like a $2 DVD from Walmart at one point when it was raining and we didn't want to be, cause I mean, we don't, we, we never, we didn't feel like we had to push ourselves more than we needed to. Okay. We're not like, Hey, we, we have to prove something to ourselves about how rough and tumble we are. If it's raining and we want to kick back, let's just, let's just all cuddle up, put the seats down in the car. And, uh, we put a movie on and on the screens and we watched, uh, I think it was Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And and we like had like some little camping stoves or something and cooked some stuff. We cooked stuff on the camping stoves in the back of the car, which I think is a, quite a bit of a hazard in several different ways. But nothing bad happened. So, yay us. Wait, so from Calgary, Alberta, Canada... North America, Earth, Milky Way. We drove to Banff. I don't know. This part, I'm, I don't know where we went when. Okay, this is the part I'm bad at, knowing, you know, keeping our itinerary in mind. We stayed all sorts of cool places. Banff, we drove, because there's this pl there's this road called the Icefield Parkway that kind of goes up and up and down between a couple of, uh, a few great places like Banff, National, National, National Park, Jasper National Park, and uh, I don't know why it's called the Icefield Parkway. Maybe it's a little icier and fieldier uh, in the winter time. But it was just like a nice two-lane highway winding up and down. It was good scenery. Okay, it was good scenery. But I don't know where the ice field part came from. I think maybe in winter it's a little crazier. But we were there uh, in the middle of June, I think, and. The weather was great. It was beautiful. The sun was shining. Everything was amazing. Uh, and there were no ice fields. Uh, there were, there were, however, tons of crazy, sharp, amu amusing, amazing mountains just jutting up into the sky. And there were, there was snow on those and trees and just the shapes of the mountains, you know, ripping the sky apart in amazing clouds. <sighs> I loved all of it. We drove a long way. We drove a lot. I, dr I did all the driving because I'm the only one that was 25. Everyone else was like 23 or something, you know. So if you try to rent a car before you're 25, they hit you with some other hidden, they're not hidden, but extra fees, you know, that like doubles the price of renting a car. It's crazy. So 25 is like some magic n number for renting cars as far as insurance goes, I guess. But I didn't mind doing the driving. My coffee's getting kind of room temperature, but it just means I need to hurry up and sip at this quicker so I can go get a refill, right? We went on some pretty great hikes. The first hike we went on was absolute, uh, absolute torture for me. And I realized how out of shape I was and that the, all the people I was with were somehow uh, in, they weren't, they're not like super, I think actually maybe they were super athletes or something, especially Ryan. Mm. but uh, it was just awful. I was miserable. I That was definitely the worst hike for me as far as how I physically felt. Just I almost felt like I was going to throw up at one point, and everyone else was just like hiking along whimsically like it was just a stroll in the park, and I was just, I felt like my whole body was about to explode. Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. But it was like, uh, it's like, I mean, I told him, I was like, this, I, I just now realized how out of shape I am. And they just, you know, like, what do you say to that? They're like, you just chuckle and say, yeah. Also, I was wearing my favorite pair of pants that day. I think it was the first, second day we were out there. And I sat down to take a break one time and I sat right in a big, fat puddle of sap. 
And then I stood up, and a big fat puddle of sap was just make a big splotch on my the butt of my pants, right where my my bee hole is. So it looked awful. And how do you get sap out of pants? I'm serious. I've washed that pair of pants. And it's, it's still in there, you know. It's still a spot. Do you need like vinegar, baking soda, some other weird life hack, old wives' tale? Do you, do you like? Gotta use bubble gum or something. Some other extra special force against it to pull the, the sap out. It's in there. Right on the butt of my pants. It's not fair. I love those pants. But I don't wear those pants much anymore anyways because they are absolutely falling apart. And they don't even make those pants anymore. They're like It's like a discontinued line of Vans joggers. They're, they're tearing at both knees. Um, all, like, all like the corner of the pocket where I put my wallet in. And then now just like a whole... Across the butt, there's holes everywhere. It's just like, you know how it is when you wear pants too much. And you, I don't even wash those pants that much. I've just worn them to threads. I have. But that's why I like them so much. They're so comfortable and comfy and cozy. And I sleep in them. I pretty much only wear p- own pants that are comfortable enough to sleep in. But that could be a different you know, standard for me. What's comfortable enough to sleep in than it is for some other people. I used to not wear any pants at all to sleep in. But then at some point in my life, you know, I just sleep in my underwear. But then at some point in my life, it got suddenly, I don't know what changed, but something got weird to me. I couldn't stand the feeling of my legs touching each other while I was asleep or in bed or pretty much any time. So now I like always wear pants. I, I, don't, I don't like wearing shorts at, almost ever because then, then I can feel my legs touching each other. I don't know why that bothers me so much. It does though. It really does. I need help. What's, where, where do you go to for legs helping? How, how do you go to for legs touching each other therapy? Do you just go to some place where there's a lot of people in shorts and they all stick their legs in together and you just, it's like exposure therapy for everyone's legs touching each other? You just wiggle them about, rub them and nobody shaves or anything? Or maybe some people do and some people don't. I don't know what to do. Just wear pants all the time, I guess. I'll get more coffee. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. The fresh cup of joe. That's way too hot. Speaking of coffee, hot beverages, warm drinks on a on any sort of day. There was one sweet sweet hike we did on a day where we got up really early because we heard this was a crowded crowd place, a busy popular hike. We arrived at the at the trailhead at like, I don't know, like five or six or seven. I don't know. Some crazy place. We were like the third car in the parking lot. So we parked literally right in front of the trailhead. And um, we sat there for a few minutes, made our sandwiches and packed our lunches and stuff. Our sandwiches were usually um, some some kind of wheat bread. Maybe honey wheat or 12 grain, whole grain, something or other. And then we would put uh, peanut butter on them. And then we, we would slice bananas up on them. And then we would drizzle a little honey on there. Except for Holden, who didn't want honey on hers most of the time. Because the first day when she had honey on hers, she got her hands all sticky. And she, she didn't want that for the rest of the trip. Because she had a bad honey experience. Um, so we got we packed our lunches. It's like... Yeah, so the sandwiches and some chips and maybe like an apple sometimes and maybe a granola bar. My sandwich often would end up really just smushed to crap by the time I got to lunch. Just all the stuff I had in my backpack. I packed tons of water. I feel like more water than most other people, but I'm just a, I'm just accumulated, associated, um, accustomed, accustomed to drinking lots of water. Plus, I'm in bad shape. Does that make me so I drink more water? Anyways, this was at Lake Louise in some place. I don't know where it was, but it's called Lake Louise. You might know of it. You might not. It was beautiful. We got there first thing in the morning. There were just a couple of photographers there on the edge of the lake, people taking pictures of themselves, some lady in a wedding dress getting her pictures taken there by the edge. And there was this big, beautiful, like iconic hotel there on the edge of the lake as well. Really nice architecture. 
just, I'm guessing there were like a lot of people in there sleeping or something because it was, this was a stark contrast to when it returned at the end, at the end of the day after our hike. Uh, but yeah, there were like, maybe we saw like 10 or 20 people total on the edge of the lake. Um, excuse me. And so we kept on walking. We started the hike and the idea was to get here early so we could be, we could, we could hike up to this tea house up in the mountain, far up in the mountain, like a, like a few kilometers up in there. And eventually we got there. It was really nice. We were one of the first people in the tea house because we had started so early and I don't know, we timed it just right to whatever time they opened or whatever. And there was like another little lake right there next to the tea. I mean, look at me. I'm, I'm like got out of breath just talking. Ridiculous. So we got to the tea house. We all sat down and it was just so cute and cozy. And it was like this wooden building ma made for originally, you know, like a thousand years ago for trans-Canadian Pacific Railroad workers or something. And, uh, but it was now a tea house and they had to hike up some supplies every morning. All the people hiked up there and every now and then a helicopter would bring up supplies or something. And, and at one point I saw as we were leaving, we were walking by the lake that was like, there's a lake like 50 feet away from the door of this little house that was a tea house. And, the, and, and it's also right next to a, a waterfall. It was like on the edge of this water. It was just all too picturesque. It was painfully picturesque. Oh, but, but the frustrating thing was you had to like be there in the middle of it. You couldn't take a picture of it. Cause if you took a picture of it, you would just get some tiny sliver of it. Right. And it would just be like a slap in the face to the whole experience. Like, how dare you, how dare you insult this experience with, just taking a sliver of it in a picture, right? You ever get that feeling? What an insult to this whole thing to try to take a picture of it. Anyways, so as we were leaving, there was this little lake there and, the, and, and there was like this little room back there where they had all been making tea and stuff and the, one of the girls ran out with this big steel teapot, maybe like a one gallon teapot or something. And she, she ran out to the lake kind of like almost running into us. Like she was in a big hurry, like just blindly running. And she, I said, oh, please, oh, please run and get some, some water from that lake. And she did. She ran right up to it and knelt down by the lake and just scooped up some water into that teapot and ran back into the tea house to make some more tea with the lake water. Oh, it was just so perfect. And then, uh, I don't know, we kept going because we heard there was another tea house even farther up in the mountains up by a glacier so we hiked and hiked and down and around and back up again and at this point um some people warned us that there was like snow covering part of the trail and and but but, but people were still going so we, we kept going and there were a big chunk of snow so we had to like go down and around and over big areas of snowfall and it was all getting crazy and at some points we heard, there was like huge mountain ranges up all around us and we could see glaciers and huge, huge like shelves of snow up in the mountains, you know, like hundreds of feet thick. And we could, if we stopped and listened, sometimes we could hear like this cracking noise, like crack, 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 crack. And so, but then we had to keep going because we didn't know what that was. So eventually we got there after a few more hours of hiking got up to the second tea house where people actually lived there for a few days at a time on shifts, like four days at a time they'd lived there for going back down. I know this because I asked a girl, I said, are you guys hiring? And she said, yeah. And uh, apparently that time also it was all girls living there, even though that's not how it, that's just how it turned out to be. Apparently it's just, but, but there have been guys working there before. I could have, I think, I think personally I could have gotten a job there. They have a website and everything. But the girl didn't know what it was. She's just like, we do have a website, but I don't know what it is. Anyways, <clears throat> they had good tea there. I think I got, I think we had some cake or something, some really nice chocolate cake and some tea. I had walnut truffle tea and I got a little coupon or I, I saved the, my receipt. And then later back in Banff, I bought some of the same tea at the Banff Tea Co um, store there. The same tea. Well, it was a little frustrating though because I went to because this was good tea. I liked it, right? And I thought I drink a lot of coffee, 
I like warm, comforting beverages. Maybe I should try to switch over to tea a little bit more. I don't know, does tea have less caffeine or something? I just like trying to, I don't know, I feel like drinking so much coffee isn't that great for me, even though that doesn't the WHO say you should drink like 45 cups of coffee a day to be healthy? I'm not sure. But I, f I feel like it couldn't be bad to drink some tea, too. Maybe instead of, or alongside, or... Tea's not awful, right? Especially since I'm never putting any cream or sugar or honey or anything in any of my, any of my beverages. So, so I went in there and I was like, yeah, I want the walnut truffle tea, please. You know, like I had that up at the tea house and it was great. And the, and the lady at the store, she was very nice. She was like some British lady and uh, she's like talking about how she knew all these. You know, I don't know what she was talking about. It, it, it made more sense then but anyways she told me she was like this is one of the own there first of all the wall there was just lined with all these like a million different types of teas and you could like crack them open and smell the you know the different types of teas and it's all shredded and uh it looks so good and and i don't know but but then she said this weird thing to me that discouraged me a little bit she's like this is one of the one of three this is one of three one of the only three teas we have with synthetic elements added to it or something like that but basically the idea was that this is one of the only three teas they had that wasn't entirely like a real tea like they add fake flavors to it right but she's like but it's very it's very popular though i was like why are you gonna tell me that right when i'm like trying to get excited about drinking some tea you know and trying to get into it and then you're like I don't know. She's probably just trying to be helpful and trying to be informative and stuff. But then I felt like I was like getting like shot back down again when I was trying to become like some sort of tea head and get into it. But if I really was, maybe then I would have been like, oh, actually, oh, actually, I don't want this one. I actually want only the pure, the purest of teas, which which tea here is the purest. I want no synthetic additives, please. But I don't know, I didn't. I still got it, because I knew I liked it. And I do like it. And I have the bag of it here. It's right here. You guys want to... Uh... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a whiff. It's just good to smell. It's good to smell sometimes. You guys want a whiff? <sighs> to me, it kind of smells like pipe tobacco for some reason. Kind of looks like it too. Let me close it again. Anyways, I bought a, I bought like twenty five bucks worth of it, which is like a big, pretty big bag of it. I think I think it should last me a while, especially when you, then I got one of those little the little uh, straining balls, you know, the ball you put in there, put it in, and, and you put it. It's loose leaf tea, you know, so you put it in there, and you just put a few pinches in there, so the bag should last a few last quite a while, especially since I don't actually drink tea that often. I mostly drink coffee. Anyways, we're up there at the tea house, chit-chatting, talking to people, talking to each other, enjoying just the vibe, the atmosphere. We're way up in the mountains, and this tea house had originally been made for mountaineers to stay at. Um, something like that. I don't know, because people like climbing mountains, you know? And we were, I was reading about one of the mountains here where, you know, first first guy who tried to climb it, uh, died or something, right? Which only made tons of people want to try climbing it more. You know how those mountaineer types are. Uh, so then, you know, anyways, eventually someone reached the top. I think it was like a group of like 12 people. They canoed across Lake, Lake Lorraine. Is that what I said it was called? Lake Lorraine. Maybe. I don't know. They canoed across it and then climbed up it like all in less than like 24 hours or something. It was crazy. Really crazy stuff. And um, and then we were just like standing around looking at some flowers or something. Maybe looking at the chick monks. And I... And then and then we saw a avalanche, guys. We saw an avalanche. Like one of those... Because there was all these huge big shelves of snow and ice. Just kind of lingering and loitering up between the tall parts of the mountains. And then you hear this huge crack and a crumble. And you look over and... These huge, just tons and tons of snow and ice is falling from way up there and just falling down into the valley. And it was amazing. 
and, and scary. But we were like beside it. We weren't really below it. So it wasn't scary for us. Just scary. Just the sheer magnitude and scale of it. Just tons and tons. Maybe, I don't know. I, I, it was like too far away and too big. I had no real sense of scale. Like really how much snow it was. Or <laughs> I just knew it was big and scary. And they, some other person there said like that doesn't happen very often. But it just happened while we were there. But then again, while we were climbing up. I, I heard that, that cracking, like I said, and I had pointed my finger at it like a finger gun and gone, patoo, patoo. So I think that might have kind of triggered that and weakened it and, and put those events into motion. I'm, will, I'm willing to believe that. You guys like coffee. Some people don't like coffee. That's fine. The one thing I like drinking more than coffee is water. Do you guys like water? Some people don't like water. I think maybe they don't have good water or something. What I don't like that a lot of people do seem to like is really cold water. Like ice water. Just I just like like cool or near room temperature water maybe just like slightly above i don't know i keep i just have like a water bottle water bottle waddle water bottle near, near my desk all times just with water from the faucet in it and i guess it's that means it's room temperature right that's just so delicious to me i just love drinking that water it's so good it's amazing <sighs> anyways and then we also um, one time we broke down, you know, it's a good camping trip if you stop and then one night you just get some Domino's pizza, right? Cause we were like trying to get, we were like trying to make some tuna sandwiches at one point or crackers, I think, or trying to figure out how to cook some hot dogs over a fire or something. But it was like rain, you know, sometimes rain just kind of breaks your spirits a little bit as campers. So we were like, let's just go get some pizza. So we like looked it up. We're like, there's a pizza place right here, it says. So we like drove back into town because we, we pretty much just spend the whole time camping out of our car at various campsites. You know, you can like get a little campsite which has like a little plot and a picnic table and a fire pit and you park your car in there, put up your tents. We drove back into town following the signs or following our phone or whatever. We're like there's dominoes right in here, but we found ourselves in this really weird part of town. It was like a weird industrial park. Uh, and we're like, is there really a Domino's in here? We're like driving along slowly, like it should be right up here. And we're all half expecting this Domino's to be just like a like an auto parts place that called Domino's, or maybe like a floor coverings manufacturer called Domino's Floor Coverings Manufacturings Pizza or something, right? Some sort of mistake, some sort of miscategorization on the map. But it turns out there's actually a, a little Domino's right there. But it was the weirdest Domino's we've ever seen. Because it had no front door. It only had a back door. Or maybe two back doors. And it had no place to walk in. Right? You just kind of stand outside or step right inside the back door. And, uh... As soon as, if you step inside, you're just right inside like the place where they have like all the crates of drinks and and like all the supplies and stuff. And like a guy just walked down and he's like, he just like looks at you for a second. And he's like, do you guys order yet? And we're like, no. He's like, oh, you need a menu? He like pulls a menu out of like a pile of menus in a crate. And he's like, here you go. And, and, and I was like, are there any specials? He's like, uh, yeah, 50%. I was like. 50% off what? He's like, pizza. Oh, 50% off pizza. So we're like looking through it. And I go back in. And there's like this other like German couple there. There's are like road trip in there from Germany. They've got like, like a little sweet little camper van thing going. They're telling us about it. They've ordered. And I go in there and I'm like trying to order. And they're just all like, all the employees like milling around in there. I think they're all like really high. Just like making pizza and like, I think it's like a mostly just like a delivery place, right? Because these vans keep pulling up 
and delivery guys keep jumping out, grabbing pizzas, jumping back in, like peeling out in the parking lot, zooming off. Uh, and I was like, then so a guy walks back up to me. He's like, uh, "What do you want?" And I'm like, uh, "Take the uh, cheese pizza and pepperoni pizza or something like that." He's like, "Okay." They, they, like they don't even like walk. They don't even write it down or or anything, right? They just like walk over and start making the pizzas. It's, it's just it's so funny. So we got our pizzas, went back, ate them. It was delicious. It's like that kind of thing when you feel like you've been. You're like we probably weren't really roughing it, but. It's like so good. Like it had just stopped raining, so we sat down at our little picnic table, ate our pizzas, played some Uno or something. I think we had this game called Monopoly Deal, actually. I don't know if y'all ever played that. It was pretty much Uno or Monopoly with cards. Anyways, but you know, it's just like that vibe, just chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool pizza outside the campground. We saw a lot of bears on that trip also. That was like a goal that some of the people had. They're like, I just want to see a bear. We saw at least 10 bears. Some people we talked to also went on similar trips to similar areas, and they saw zero bears, which boggled our minds because they were everywhere. Thankfully, we only saw bears when we were in our car. So we could just like roll the window down. You know, they were just off by the side of the road, and we only pretty much ever saw them because there was already like 40 cars stopped. Okay, maybe like five or 10 cars stopped, sometimes 40. And then like the, the the park rangers would have to come along, turn the lights, get everyone moving again. And then they just, it's pretty much as long as the bears were there by the side of the road, it seemed like the park rangers would just keep going, doing loops on that part of the road just to keep everyone moving. Uh, but it's, that seems like a tough job to keep everyone moving. When there's a bear there, people haven't seen bears, they stop, they take pictures. And then some crazy people, it seems like mostly Asian tourists, pretty, um, it's not being, I'm not trying to be discriminatory or anything here, but the only people I ever saw getting out of their cars to take pictures of bears were Asians. And I, that just boggled my mind because there's, those are, those are, I don't know what kind of bears they were, but they were bears and stay in your car. Cause I, I was ready to, to gun it at any second. If that bear looked at me sideways, I know I was stopped with my window down, but I was still in drive. And I had one foot on the brake and one foot on the gas, right? I was ready to go. And these people were out there with their their nice cameras or their, I don't know, they are just like walking up like they were at a, at a petting zoo or something. It was, it was crazy to me. But I was there ready to photograph it if they did get devoured, I guess. I don't know. Just my mind was spinning. Like, what are you doing? And we saw, um, we saw some little mountain goats which were really, we were up at this place called Mirror Lake, and uh, there were mountain goats up on the hills, just really tiny little dots, really. I'm surprised anyone saw them, but whenever people saw these dots, they would be up there with their binoculars, like, hey, look, there's mountain goats, and everyone else without the binoculars would just have to be like, well, nice dots on the mountainside. I zoomed in on them with my camera, but it's still not the same. We saw regular like longhorn goats or whatever they're called with the big they were really shaggy this time of year though they didn't look pretty at all something about losing their fur or regrowing it or something they didn't look nice i mean they look like goats but i feel like maybe if you get them in the right time of year they look a little better or a little more picturesque you know what i mean also there was this one crazy road we went on i wish i could tell you what it was called uh it was like cut in the side of a mountain winding up and around i think we're uh, i don't know where it was but it was just the most insane road because it was so it was this too narrow road i mean two lane road super narrow cut into the side of a, a mountain winding around and the mountainside lane you constantly felt like uh especially in a big truck like like the one i was driving the yukon you, you you would you felt it felt like the the the, the cliff edge the the the, ma the mountain was just like the sharpest rocks jutting out at the car the whole time and I thought it was gonna get peeled open like a sardine can at any second it was 
the most nerve-wracking thing, especially since the people in the other lane were on the edge of a cliff and kept on coming really, really close to the double yellow line or crossing it. And I was staying really, really close to the double yellow line or crossing it because I thought I was about to get my car ripped open by the mountain jutting out into my lane, just the sharpest razor tooth rocks and, and stuff. So every, those people are afraid of falling off the mountain. I'm being afraid of being scraped al open alive by the mountain. And it was just the craziest thing. I don't know how there weren't any accidents there that we saw. Like everything was just flowing I mean, a little bit crazily, but like nobody ran into each other or the mountain or fell off. It was insane. It's my heart rate's going up a little bit just thinking about it. Okay, I just, you think after all these years of drinking coffee, I would be, uh, drinking things in general, I'd be a little bit better at it, but I just messed up a little bit. A little bit on the desk, a little bit on the floor. All right, it's okay. I want it all in my belly. Mm. What other animals did we see? We saw elk at one campground. There were just like some elk out standing in a field. They didn't have horns or anything, so I'm never sure if it's like the time of year when they could be male elk that haven't grown their horns back yet, or just female elk, and there were some little baby elk. We did see a little baby baby bear also, and we saw brown bears, but I think one of them, one time there was a blonde brown bear, and then like a brunette brown bear. That's what the park ranger told us. She was like screaming at cars to move, and we pulled up, we're like, is that a brown bear or a grizzly bear, or what's going on there? She's like, no, it's a brown one and a blonde one, but they're brown bears. We're like, okay. But then she went back to screaming, like immediately, like, move your cars, keep out, everybody keep. But she was like very nice to us for one breath, and then she started screaming again. But, I mean, overall, the night, the trip was good. I feel like there's like a million more things I could say. Um, all those touristy towns, like every town that's on the edge of a national park is always very touristy, ritzy. You don't want to shop for groceries there because it's all at least double the price, you know, um, it's tough, but <laughs> I mean tough, but we're out there doing a totally optional thing. So it couldn't, it couldn't be really that tough, but it was, it was good. I would do it again. I loved it. Of course, you know, I started feeling homesick after, you know, pretty quick, obviously. If I leave, if I leave home, you know, to go buy groceries, before I've even gotten to the grocery store, I'm feeling homesick again. But I was able to, there were enough other good feelings um, going on that I wasn't miserable the whole time. I was having a lot of, a lot of good, good old fashioned fun, camping and stuff, looking at a, a beautiful, wonderful nature. I recorded a lot of footage, okay? But there hasn't been a video about it yet because here's my problem. I, it's like all, well, to put it bluntly, it's all really boring footage. It's all footage that would work great for like an opening title scene of, of a video or some sort of time, little time lapses and stuff. But I don't know if I can put it all into like a standalone video of any sort, right? Like there's no narrative or anything. It's just like a bunch of shots of like clouds moving and driving and people walking and some close-ups of flowers and it's also I, also I realized it's hard to do very good steady panning shots of mountain ranges and and to, and to get a good feeling for the scale of everything that's also difficult maybe you need a good camera or wider wider angle lens or something hmm not sure Yeah. Yeah, it's frustrating because I feel like there's so many more things I wanted to say, but I'm not saying them. It's okay. We were down by... S there were so many... Look, last time I went out west, out traveling, um, I was with almost the same group. Actually, only one person who was the same, Holden. And then a couple of other people. But last time I went out to like, some of the national parks down and around like Zion National Park and 
and uh, you know, like Arches National Park or down near Arizona and Utah and stuff like that. It was much more desert, a lot, very almost completely desert, except for when we went to um, Rocky Mountain National Park, and that was more of a winter wasteland. Um, no, I could say Wonderland, but still, I wouldn't live there because it was just too cold and rocky, mountainous. But it was beautiful. I don't know what I want in life in general, but um, I was gonna say, oh yeah, there's so many more lakes here, and and these lakes that I saw were such wild, amazing colors, and I couldn't figure out why they were such wild, amazing colors. There's there was this one called Peyote Lake or something. Oh, I can't remember what it was called, but. It was the most insane color of, like, bright blue, maybe a tinge of green. And, like, there was even, like, a little diagram, you know, how they have the little boards with the explanations and the and the lore and stuff, t trying to explain, you know, with the little arrows showing the way that the sun comes down and glints and refracts and the different colors doing due to the silt and the sludge and everything from glaciers and little bits of dust and all this going in there. But, I mean, it doesn't really mean anything to you. All you really see is this great, big, glorious blue lake like you've never seen before. I can't really process in my head how sun rays work. Can anybody? I mean, you can, you can maybe verbalize the information, but really, you've just got to sit there and uh, appreciate the beauty. I think that's maybe the best thing. Hmm. Huh. Well, well, I don't know what else to say. Hope y'all have a good day. You're all looking, um, let me take a look at the crowd here. I'm making eye contact right now. Yes, you. Yes, you. You're beautiful. And you. Yeah, y'all look great. Thanks for coming out today. Uh, stick around next time. Hopefully I won't take so long to make another podcast. I mean, I have things. I mean, I always have things to talk about. It's the most frustrating thing. You know, I have lived a whole life. M millions of things are happening, uh, happening every second, and still I can sit here and my mind be absolutely blank. There's this guy. There's this guy at a used bookstore in Wilmington, and he, I so envy his skill to talk endlessly. I'll, I'll go, I'll pick out my books, and then I'll go check out and I'll say, yeah. Yeah, I'll take these books and he'll tell me the total. Usually, he'll usually round down for me because we're cool like that. He'll round down. And last time I went in there, he even had a book set aside for me. He's like, hey, I thought you'd like this. It was a book he'd never seen before, but he thought I'd like. So that was cool, right? It's like I'm a regular there and he knows what I like. And he set a book aside for me. He's like, I knew you'd be back for it sometime. Anyways, that was super cool. But anyways, this guy can talk forever. And it's the craziest thing because I'll be like trying to walk out the front door and he'll, he'll be talking about one thing and then I'll, I'll like turn the handle of the front door and open it as he's drawing to a close on whatever topic he's talking about. But then somehow whatever he's saying will just seamlessly enter into another totally unrelated topic and he'll talk about that for five or ten more minutes and then that topic will just seamlessly integrate into the next thing and it's just crazy i don't know how he does it he never he, he never just stands there looking blankly off into the distance he's always got a thing to say and it it's always at least a little bit interesting too maybe it's because of all the books he's read or all the people he's met working at a bookstore or, I, I, I don't know Like me, right now, what I just did, like, he would have never done that. He, he would have, as soon as he finished saying one thing, he would have been, been like, yeah, but then the other blah, 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 blah. And then once he finished saying that, he would have been like, and then the blah, 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 blah. And then that would have lasted five minutes. And then he would have said, and then last year, blah, 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 blah. And then he, and whatever that was, he would have related it to, 
But then my my niece in law was blah 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 blah, you know. And you just stand there, you stand there nodding and being like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> that's pretty crazy." Slowly, you know, by this time, only you've slowly wet, you know worked your way out the front door, and only like one of your eyes and your nose and maybe your knee and your toes are in the door still. Most of your body is out of it, and you're like, so eventually you just gotta be like, "Well, I gotta go," and he's like. Yeah, all right, but but then you know, we were out by the river the other day, and and still you can't leave because this guy is cool and nice, and he has this kind of interesting things to say. So it just keeps going and going and going, and he's good at talking. So you and you wonder if you just slowly closed the door and walked away, if he would keep talking or not. I'm just not sure. No, nah, he's cool. Sometimes I've left. I've just been like, in the, while he's in the middle of a sentence, I'll be like, Yo, sorry though. Thank you so much. Goodbye. I gotta go. Have a good one, man. Thanks for the books. You're awesome. All right. No, but I am gonna go also. Guys, I'm talking to you now. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good day.